So yeah, um, just tell me a little bit about who you are so people can... Sure, my name is Ron Valent. Uh, I moved to Lacombe in 2012 and I'm a journeyman carpenter, journeyman pipe fitter. And I'm just a concerned citizen. I see Canada going down the drain and uh, we need to do something about it. So, How long have you been involved in politics? Uh, two months. Okay. <laughs> so pretty, pretty... No, it's actually longer than that. I think it's uh, probably since uh, September of last year. Okay. So I really, I, I saw the political system as being kind of hijacked, uh, just like Maxine Bernier said, and uh, I just felt that there was no point really entering into it. But now with the People's Party of Canada coming online, it's a fresh party that just came out September 14th is when it was created. Um, and it's sweeping the nation right now. And the thing about it is it's, it's not hijacked by special interest groups and crony capitalism. You see SNC-Lavalin, you see the hands that they have all over the Liberal government, right? And uh, no, this is, this is fresh and new. And, and when you see Maxine Bernier, I mean, he could have stayed with the Conservative Party because he was there for 11 years, ran for the leadership race. Uh, he had 49% of the vote. Uh, he could have easily just stayed there, but uh, he just saw that it, that it was corrupt as well. So, but now so you got this brand new fresh start and it's the people's party, you know, and really that's what it is. It's about the people rising up as a populist type of movement, I'd say. Was there any like specific catalyst that just said, you know, I, I assume you were conservative before. Um, mm-hmm. Was there any sort of catalyst that just kind of made you flip the switch on, on what you wanted to do? Well, what with? happened was, uh, I mean, I was pretty much out of the scene. Uh, I saw Brian Mulroney. I, when I was a young man, that was way back in the 80s, <laughs> probably before you were born. <laughs> I don't know. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, but I, you know, I had voted there and I was, you know, conservative financially and I've always have been. And I was hoping that Brian Mulroney would be able to deal with the money that was just come pouring out of Canada. But he spent money just like Pierre Trudeau. Like you wouldn't believe, it's just so accelerated, and um, and I could see right then that the Conservative Party failed on its basic fundamental principle of fiscal conservative values, right? And it's been repeated over the time, and and you know our debt is so enormous. I mean, uh, it's up to about seven hundred twenty billion dollars of what's been racked up if you you know aver- average it out for inflation. But that's not including the interest yet. <clears throat> and so uh, there's other uh, websites that track our debt, and it's up to $1.2 trillion they're talking. So that's like $133,000 per family of four. And how are we going to pay that, right? And they just keep on spending more and more. And really, actually, the Conservatives have spent more money than the Liberals. So I went and I went, the CBC had done this thing, and they said how much was uh, all the deficits and whatnot. I added it up and everything else and subtracted any surpluses that, well, the Liberals had. Conservatives had it for one year, I think. But but the Conservatives, they spent, uh, according to my math, it could be rough, but it's like 44% more than the Liberals. So what's that, right? And um, so... I pretty much gave up on all of the politics there because I just I was just waiting for the train wreck. I'm waiting for the Venezuela moment to happen here in Canada. Like Venezuela, the people over there, they're starving. They've lost 20 pounds each per person. They wait six, eight hours in line for a bag of rice from the government. Uh, crime has skyrocketed. Their money's worth nothing. Uh, you got professional women, you know, they're prostituting themselves in order to be able to survive. Millions of people have left the country. And it's all because... Well, socialist for one, but the other thing is that they borrowed way too much money, and they got then they got caught. And we're in the same position; we just keep on borrowing all this money. What happens if interest rates go up to twenty percent, like they did in the eighties? Instead of uh, you know paying twenty five billion dollars a year just to make our interest payments, we're going to go all the way up to probably you know two hundred. Like we want, it will be bankrupt. Eh? So uh, we have to deal with the debt, and that's one thing that the, the uh, party is going to deal with is that. There's a real plan to deal with the debt and the deficit, uh, the deficit to be balanced in two years. And we'd say how we're going to do it exactly, too, because um, corporate welfare, you know, go, uh, the money going to the major corporations, you know, it's like almost $5 billion a year right there. We've given away $4 billion away just for uh, foreign aid. Like we've given away $2.3 billion for uh, African nations to fight climate change, you know, and and just all kinds of ridiculous stuff. <clears throat> so all of that's going to be chopped off. Uh, and uh, 
Probably we're going to defund the CBC. That's $1.2 billion a year. CBC has cost us a huge amount of money. Now, it'd be okay if, um, if we were out of debt and we could afford it, but we can't afford CBC. It's just as simple as that. I know a lot of people enjoy it, but uh, can't afford it. You know, so we got to deal with we got to deal with these money issues before we end up hitting like Venezuela. So how long did it take you to make the decision to throw your name in to try and represent this area? Uh, well, I don't know, a few months, I guess. I mean, I I just as I saw more and more of it, uh, like what happened was, like I said, I was completely out of the spectrum there. And then I saw that uh, on YouTube, I think it was it was a year late after the fact it was talking about the the Conservative Party had a leadership race. And I thought to myself, well, who cares? You know, it doesn't matter, right? But, you know, Trudeau is just hammering us into the ground so far that I thought, okay, let's take a look. And I saw, and I listened to Andrew Scheer for a couple of minutes and, and I paused and I kind of said, may God help Canada. Because <laughs> 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 I just don't see him doing, uh, you know, pulling it off, right? And so then I checked out who was number two. He had Maxine Bernier had 49% of the vote, only 1% difference. And he was actually leading all the way through the leadership until the very end. And then uh, after that, that very night, I understand they destroyed the ballots so it couldn't be recounted. But So there's some corruption and stuff going on there, apparently, what people are saying. Uh, but anyhow, um, I listened to Maxime Bernier for a couple of minutes and I said, you know, there's a politician who's actually honest and straight up. You just got to listen to him. You know, when people listen to him, they say it's so refreshing, right? Because you're not getting some kind of, you know, line, right? <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, what, I mean, you've touched on it a little bit, but why do you think that the People's Party is that party that should be, you know, forming government in Canada? The main things. Um, okay, there's three points. One is Maxime Bernier himself, uh, because um, he's a bold, courageous leader and he's willing to speak about the Canadian values that are most important. Like, you know, one thing is free speech, right? Uh, I don't know if you heard about that there's a father who's not allowed to referred to his 14-year-old daughter as a girl and must comply to her gender transition. She's, you know, a young girl. And there's recently a Christian man has been fined $55,000 for calling a Vancouver transgender politician a biological mayor, a, a ma biological male. You know, so this stuff is just getting way out of control, you know. And uh, so you look at the party platform of the PPC, what they're planning on doing, like you got um, the issue of dealing with the debt, and the deficit, right? I mean, how many times have you heard of, of a political party talking about getting rid of the debt? You, the, all they talk about is a balancing the budget, right? You know, oh, we miss balancing the budget, you know, by 10 billion or so. It doesn't, you know, oh, well. But they don't talk about the debt. But here, they're talking about the debt. So that was a key issue. The other one was immigration, because we got a really serious big immigration issue going on. We got 40,000 people that have illegally crossed into Canada in uh, Quebec at Roxham Road, right? And uh, and we're housing them in hotels right now. You know, they were already in a safe haven in New York City. You don't have to come all the way over here. And so the People's Party would deal with that and, and move them back into New York, you know? <laughs> the Conservatives, I think, would, would hang on to them here and everything else. And it's going to take three years for their cases to be, you know, decided on. And we're so backlogged as it is. And so these guys are kind of, stepping ahead of the people who are legitimately waiting to come into Canada, right? So there's a fantastic immigration policy. Oh, the other thing, too, is that while the Liberals and Conservatives want to increase immigration, we want to have it decreased with a maximum of 250000 per year. So 80% of that would make up uh, economic uh, immigrants. That's depending on whether we need that many to fill the jobs, right? The other 10% would be reunification of families and 10% uh, for true refugees, and the other big thing that uh, most Canadians don't know about is that uh, uh, the Liberal Immigration Minister, Hussan, who's uh, Somali-born, uh, he actually helped create this UN uh, Global Compact of Migration. And when you look at it, it gives them a right. So you can have anyone come into Canada now and they will, you know, lay claim to our social services and all of our resources, right? And uh, so this is going to just absolutely destroy Canada. We could have millions of people coming into Canada with this system. Uh, it kind of over uh, bypasses our own immigration system, you know. So that's a huge thing right there. That That's massive to me. The other thing, too, is, you know, when you look at the policies and the platform, I encourage people to go to peoplespartycanada.ca, check out the platform, you'll be amazed. And 
One of the things is to uh, to run the pipelines to the coast, you know, mm -hmm. and also across Canada. Like, it makes no sense to me that we don't have a Trans-Canada pipeline for national security. Like, why why do those guys have to get, you know, foreign oil all the time? It's coming as far away as you know, Saudi Arabia and tankers. Uh, so the Conservatives didn't do it. They had 10 years to do it when they were there. The Liberals, they create laws to purposely stop it, right? Uh, but with the People's Party of Canada, like, there's actually a clause in the Constitution that's uh, 9210, and it allows the federal government in this situation to impose a pipeline. It's national security, right? And uh, But that's not, you know, being talked about by the other parties, and it's never been implemented. Well, I know there was yeah. one, um, our uh, Alberta senator, uh, Doug Black, he tried to get that to go through and um, said that, you know, the prime minister needed to declare the pipeline in the national interest, and okay. uh, it was turned down by his colleagues. Yeah. So he was very disappointed by that, but he was actually in Lacombe talking about it, oh, which really? was really interesting. And his colleagues are like... In... Um, well, I mean, he's an independent senator. Okay. Um, so the other senators in Canada you're talking about? Yes. They declined it? Yes. I, this I is think ridiculous. it was close, but it was... Yeah. yeah. It ended up being, you know, I think you had some maritime and BC um, yeah. senators. You know, these things are all kind of like, people are wondering, how come everything is going upside down in Canada, right? But really what it is, it's uh, you just go and look at the UN because the UN has Agenda 21, right? Uh, that uh, Cretchen, I believe, signed on to and has been carried on. And then now it's Agenda 2030 as well. And um, when you look at those things, at first, if you're just a surface reader, you say, well, these seem like they're good points, right? You know, like ending poverty all over the world and everyone has food and all this other kind of stuff. But when you see that, okay, you have an outside body, you know, above Canada telling us what we need to do, you know what I'm saying? Like our highest authority needs to be our Canadian government, right? We don't need to have an outside authority telling us what to do. And and when you go into how they're going to implement it, it's going to change everything within our lives. Like this home that I'm in and living and driving in a car is not sustainable, according to the UN. So all of this stuff has to go. It's a radical change, like huge, like you can't even believe. And it was Stephen Harper uh, government there. It was in uh, uh, 2015 in September. It was September 25th to 27th, where they have adopted the 2030 Global Compact. And that was uh, not the Global Compact, the 2030 agenda. And and that was one month before the uh, election, right? Well, all eyes are on the election here. They're adopting this thing that is going to change our lives so radically. And we don't hear about it, right? Uh, but anyhow, you know, all of this stuff that's coming down that seems so weird and everything else like that, you just go and look back to the UN and you'll see that that's where the roots are. And so, you know, uh, Maxine Bernier calls the UN a dysfunctional organization. <laughs> And I saw that on his Twitter feed. Another thing that people need to do is go look at Maxine Bernier's Twitter because it's a little bit more unfettered. <laughs> you get to see more of what's, you know, the, the whole situation there. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, I agree. I mean, the UN, it's just, it. if anyone is in doubt about the UN, just go and look at the uh, UN Global Compact on Migration and you will clearly see that is their agenda to destroy Western democracy, to destroy our sovereignty as Canada. It's just so blatant, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, so those are key issues. Like, so, you know, it's really the fundamental thing that I see Canada at a tipping point. If the Liberals get in this next election, I think the Canada that we grew up in and we've enjoyed is going to be gone because it's just all, everything is going at a very accelerated pace, right? And it'll really be ramped up. So we have to do that. Now, people say, well, OK, well, we've got to get the liberals out. So let's vote the conservatives. Well, um, the problem is that the conservatives are so close to the liberals in so many aspects, like when it comes to equalization formula. You know, only the People's Party of Canada is saying it's unfair. Uh, you know, Alberta has been paying into this for forever and it's just sucking us dry. And it's not fair to us or Western Canada uh, to have this, you know, you've got uh, Quebec, right? They don't have to count their hydro earnings or income as part of that formula. And we have to count our petroleum income, right? So it's just ridiculous. So that'll be, uh, we can't actually get rid of it, but we can actually reduce the numbers greatly and we can make it more fair for everyone. Because, you know, Canada's divided right now, you know, east and west and everything else. So we got to unify the whole country. And uh, yeah. 
Um, where do you guys, obviously, I think um, the Liberals love to push their, their climate change um, agenda. Uh, where do you guys kind of sit with, um, you know, having a climate plan? Is there a climate plan? Well, the thing of it is uh, the environment is a shared jurisdiction between the federal government and provincial government. And regarding the carbon tax, we will not be putting any kind of carbon tax in at all. If the provinces feel that they have to do that, well, then, OK, they'll do that. And if the people don't like it, they're going to have to fight that on their provincial level. But as far as we're concerned, no, we're not going to be uh, implementing any carbon tax at all. Uh, we, we will have a plan that's going to deal with issues with the environment because we want uh, a good environment. We want clean water, clean air, right? And, uh, you know, all of this kind of thing. So that's forthcoming. But really, when you look at the People's Party of Canada, we actually have a platform, right? And it's a platform that Maxime Bernier ran on when he went for the leadership race of uh, the Conservative Party. Now, this is interesting to note about this thing about vote splitting and everything else, because people are saying, well, we've got to vote for the Conservatives, you know, like why Maxine Bernier is splitting the vote, right? But really, when you look at it, it was Andrew Scheer who split the vote, because you have Maxine Bernier, he got 49% of the vote, and, um, and then he stayed on for a whole year trying to work with the party, right? And at the end, uh, Andrew Scheer told him that he's not going to implement any of his policies, right? And... Um, if you're a good leader, you're going to go ahead and say, okay, well, we got to re, you know, unite the party here. So we'll accept 15, 20, 30 percent of your platform, right? And so come on board, right? But it was none. And one of the things was to have a balanced budget. So now you got the conservatives saying they're going to balance the budget, you know, but they didn't accept it with Maxime Bernier with his leadership uh, campaign there. So it, when they tell you that they're going to balance the budget, just look at the track record. They, you know, they've only balanced the budget maybe one year or two. And just a little bit, you know, at the very end of Stephen Harper. But, you know, Stephen Harper, they rifled through $100 billion, you know, of more debt. <laughs> you know, so, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so with with the provincial election going on, um, why run for the, at the federal level? Like, why not try and do this at the, the provincial level first? Yeah. Uh, well, there's some federal things that are very important to me, like the immigration, for one, and the debt. Uh, those those two are really big. And I think that uh, if those can be dealt with, then it can help Canada in a bigger way. Uh, uh, provincially, yeah. I mean, uh, it's we're in trouble <laughs> provincially as well. Absolutely. I mean, I considered work, uh, working with one of the parties, but I decided not to. Yeah. This this captures my uh, heart and my imagination. This is where my passion can be with the PPC because it is so radically different than anything else uh, that I see the greatest hope for Canada with that. Uh, as far as uh, provincially, well, boy, uh, we're in trouble either way we, it goes here. <laughs> Sounds good. I don't know, unless there's anything that kind of jumps to the front of your mind that people should absolutely know about. Um. Well, really, I mean, the, I think the thing to do is to, uh, well, I have a YouTube channel, actually, and I've recorded okay. Maxime Bernier a few times. I wasn't able to put a lapel microphone on him, so the audio is not as good as I'd like, I'd like, like this audio is going to be good. But, um, but there you can go and watch his speeches, right? Go and watch him. Or actually, he was on the Rubin Report on YouTube, if you go look up Maxime Bernier Rubin Report. That was a great inf interview, really well mic'd and uh, very good. Uh, I recently recorded Maxine when he came to NISCU. He was here not too long ago, a few weeks ago. And on that, that's on my channel. And then um, I have it in the description. There's a timeline uh, where you can actually go ahead and you can, and it's topical. So you can go, when he talks about different topics that might interest you, you just click on it and it'll take you right to the spot that you need to listen to it. So you're not listening to more than you want to maybe, you know, like if you want a five minute soundbite, <laughs> you click on there and you got it, right? Nice. So my YouTube channel is uh, People's Party of Canada space hyphen space PPC. Although it's hard to find it that way, um, you can look up uh, as a search, do PPC space Ron V, and you'll see a guy just standing there looking at him, you know, at the camera. That's probably me. <laughs> That's uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, and so if people want to get a hold of you, how do they do so? Uh, probably one way to do it is to um, uh, go to uh, savecanadappc at gmail.com. You can send me an email that way. 
So save Canada PPC at, at gmail.com. Gmail. Okay. I'm not so keen on giving my phone number out just yet. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. Yeah. That, that's why I asked yeah. what, how, what methods sure. you want people to reach you through. And actually the other thing too, I don't know if you caught it, but uh, I'm, I'm bidding for the nomination as a candidate for the PPC. I'm not a nominated uh, PPC uh, candidate yet. Mm-hmm. That is going to uh, end. Uh, people can go ahead and apply if they want to until April 23rd. And uh, then from there, they're going to have the decision process of who it's going to be. Now, the reason I ran is because I wanted to make absolutely sure that there is at least one candidate here, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be me, quite frankly. I'm not uh, into a political career, want to, you know, that kind of a thing. I just want to save Canada. So, you know, let them just, it's going to be decided by the grassroots here. It's going to be decided by the EDA and the the PPC members as to who they want to represent them. So, uh, yeah, so... Sounds good. I think that, yeah, I think that, that covers everything that I had. All right. Well, very on, good. So. Well, thanks for being so savvy and catching, you know, what's going on here. Well, thank you. Because the other thing is that uh, what, what it is, is that when I talk to people, nine out of 10 people don't even know the PPC exists. They're too busy working to have to pay for the, you know, like if we have to work five months of the year just to pay for the taxes that they give us, right? Mm-hmm. So everyone's at the grindstone, busy and everything else like that. So they don't even know the PPC exists and what's really going on, the danger we're in. And um, yeah, so once people find out, though, everyone I talk to and they take a look at the whole situation, they, they jump on board. And so PPC has a really good chance uh, for forming the next government, I think. It's a long shot, I agree. But um Right now we're polling at around 5% and we've only been around for six months. So uh, things are going really good. And once Bernier gets into the national debate, right, uh, you have to have, I think, 90% of the candidates of Canada in order to run in this. <laughs> it's like a big filter they've created. Mm-hmm. So no one else, like really Elizabeth May should be able to debate and, and these other parties, right? But anyhow, whatever the case may be on that. But uh, we will have that 90%. And so Maxine Bernier is going to be on television and arguing and everything else like that. And it's going to light right up then. Cool. Sounds good. Well, thank right. you so much. Well, good. Well, thank you for coming over and uh, appreciate you taking the time. Not a problem.